The growth of our economy over the next 10 years will be driven primarily by AI, robotics, semiconductors, and software. And a technology sector that hits on a couple of those is cybersecurity. And that's why I'll be going over the best cybersecurity ETF to invest in for the best growth for the next decade. And if you're like me, when you think of cybersecurity and hackers, you may be influenced by some of the glamorized movies that may have touched on during your childhood. And my childhood may date back a little bit further than yours with some of the influences of the 80s. Or maybe you have an even older perception of AI and hackers with more of a negative look and feel. Whatever your take, technology is moving quicker than ever before. And the opportunity to gain from those investments is happening right now. Our reality today is that cyber crimes make upwards of $9.5 trillion in annual losses worldwide. Just think about that for a second. There are only two economies in the world that have higher GDPs than the annual losses from cyber crimes. So it should be no surprise that the companies that focus on cybersecurity while leveraging artificial intelligence well, they're growing quickly, and they require more robust tools and resources than ever before. Because if you're a big branded company, the last thing that you wanna do is admit that your sensitive data was stolen by hackers. And yet, it seems to happen every day for even the largest of companies. Before I review the top cyber ETF, just know that I have a spreadsheet down in the link below so that you can research these further on your own. And if you want a recap of the top cybersecurity companies, I did cover it in last week's video, and it's located right over here. And an item that I discussed in that video is how one major company is losing clients and their momentum, which should benefit many of those other cybersecurity stock. So check it out if you wanna learn more. Now I need to state that my list of ETFs is geared towards cybersecurity, but just know that they also overlap a great deal with artificial intelligence. And after I list out each of these ETF, I'll try to showcase how much each of these ETF overlap with their holdings. Not every ETF is worth having, and you'll wanna find one that doesn't overlap too much with your existing portfolio. And if there's an ETF that I didn't cover that you think is missing from the video, feel free to check out my spreadsheet, but also list it in the comments so others can see it. I have to state that a few of these ETF are extremely new, and they don't have three or five year histories to look at. So in this case, I rated them a little bit lower on my list. And with that covered, let's get started with today's first cyber ETF of Themes Cybersecurity ETF with the symbol SPAM. I'm gonna say it right now that these ETF have some of the best ticker symbol names of any ETF I've reviewed. They definitely align with their sector very well. Now I'll get right into showing the top holdings within this ETF. I will highlight Okta since it is the top holding within this ETF where they are an identity management company that aids in the single sign-on and the multi-factor authentication via the cloud, mobile, and web apps, where they happen to have a very decent one-year return and they're listed as a buy within Wall Street. And as for the ETS performance, the year-to-date is just above the S&P 500, and since this fund is so new, it has no real history beyond that. But it is worth noting that the expenses happens to be one of the lowest of the group, which it sort of needs to be in order to break into the market. This is an ETF that I'll certainly watch for, but it's really tough to compare with all the other ETF with no real history. But I have to say that as good as Okta is as a company, I don't think that I want it as my top holding for an ETF within this sector. Me personally, I'm gonna pass on this one because there are much better options for me and my portfolio. The next ETF is Wisdom Tree Cybersecurity Fund, WCBR which has 25 total holdings and has one of my favorite companies as its top holding with CrowdStrike, which had recent solid quarterly results and it's showing some strong momentum, especially with such a massive one-year return. And this is one of the few companies with a strong buy from Wall Street. Now I'm gonna switch gears back to the WCBR ETF itself and list that its expense ratio is merely okay. And the year-to-date performance lags behind the S&P 500 and the one year rockets up ahead, but the three year falls way behind. And that happens to be true for a lot of tech companies because 2022 had a major pullback in tech, but it rebounded quite well in 2023. And I believe that cybersecurity is just now starting to hit another growth cycle. But as always, look for the drops to buy into any ETF or stock. Now, I don't know about you, but my whole purpose in choosing my investments is to earn myself the freedom to choose what I wanna do with my own time. And I love any tool that can add more value to me and my time. That's where today's sponsor, Shortform, comes into play. They offer a massive library of hundreds of books to choose from, and then they provide intellectual guides to these books. They're sort of like summaries, but imagine if they're beefed up on superpowers. 
They aren't generic by any means. They bring in additional concepts and ideas from other books, authors, and articles, which adds multiple concepts together. Me personally, I spend my time in the genres of business, career, and marketing, where I've enjoyed books like The Second in Command, and also recapping an old favorite of mine, The Goal. It's honestly changed my reading habits, and I think that you could get some great value from it too. Feel free to click on the link below for a free trial and also a 20% discount. Now I'll move on to the next fund of Amplify Cybersecurity ETF with the symbol HACK, which has Broadcom in its top holding, which in my opinion is a great company that is a leader in semiconductor design, data management, and also cybersecurity based on its ownership of Symantec Systems. The Symantec brand has been around for a very long time at retail with its virus protection, but they're also a major player in the arena of enterprise security solutions, where their one-year return for Broadcom is quite impressive. As for the HACK ETF, the expense ratio is a bit high at 0.6%, and the performance year-to-date is doing overall well. The one-year is substantially better than the S&P 500, but the three-year drops because of that horrible 2022 performance that I mentioned earlier, and the five-year is also a little bit lagging behind. But like I've said, this sector is just now swinging back from its lows with really good potential if the industry continues an overall market growth run. And strangely enough, election years have proven to be net positive years for the markets. For whatever reason, that doesn't always make sense. But let me know in the comments if you'd like me to go over the performance of election year investing over time, and how some politicians are seriously cleaning up the markets with their options trading. Before moving on, I do have a favor to ask of you. If you enjoy my content and the spreadsheets that I provide, please help out my channel with the simple act of pressing the like button and consider subscribing as well. Now I'll move on to the next fund of Global X cybersecurity ETF with the symbol BUG, which is one of the more popular ETFs in this sector. And I'm guessing it's the one that most of my viewers may already have in their portfolio. And when it comes to holdings, this fund has the largest exposure to CrowdStrike of any ETF out there. But I need to point out that it does have some of the other top companies like Zscaler, which had a very strong one-year return, but it has started to pull back in the last month. But Wall Street does have Zscaler as a buy rating with a hopeful strong rebound. Where as a company, Zscaler offers some of the expected cloud security platforms, but it also offers internet access solutions that provides users, internet of things, and OT devices secure access to externally managed applications. And when we look at the bug ETF details, the expense ratio is really just middle of the road at 0.51%. And the performance year to date is lagging due mostly to that February 21st drop in Palo Alto that really brought the entire world of cybersecurity down. And now going back to the one year performance of the ETF bug, it's strong at over 40%. And then the three year follows the common tech decline. And then when you look at the five year, it just barely ekes above the S&P 500. Now moving right along to the next fund of iShares cybersecurity and tech ETF with the symbol iHack, which is a resounding buy rating with its analyst. And it carries with it 50 total holdings, where it has Okta in its top spot, but the second top holding is with Sentinel-1 that had nearly a 100% growth in the past year, which isn't bad for an 11 year old company. And Sentinel-1 is hanging their hat on their push for AI automation in the threat prevention, detection, and response capabilities across its organization's endpoints. And as a company, it's also getting strong momentum from buy ratings from analysts. Now I'm gonna shift back to the details of the iHack fund where it has an expense ratio lower than average at 0.47% and the performance year to date is just merely okay, but it is still below the S&P 500. But the one year is very strong at over 40%. And the three year follows the others and it drops below the S&P, but it does come up just a little bit ahead at the five year mark. This is a fund that starts to get my ears to perk up just a little bit more and pay attention because long-term it is beating the S&P 500 and it has a focus on a very different area of technology that doesn't overlap a lot with my other high growth funds. Now on to the next fund of First Trust NASDAQ Cybersecurity ETF with the symbol CIBR or Cyber. And of course, when we look at the top 10 holdings for this fund, it is similar to others, but it is heavily weighted with the top two of Broadcom and CrowdStrike. But one of the lesser known companies is its holdings in CyberArk software that had a 90% growth rate in the trailing 12 months. And Wall Street has the company with a strong buy. And when we go back to the overall holdings of CyberFund, it is stacked with some of my top picks for cybersecurity stock. 
And when we look at the fund's expenses, it's slightly high at 0.59%. And now we're gonna move on over to the performance, where the year-to-date is lacking due to the February 21st drop that I spoke to, which was a great time to buy in. And then moving into the one year, it definitely beats the S&P 500, as does the three year, but just barely. And then the five year clearly indicates how this has been the best performing ETF in the cybersecurity space. But like I said, this one does carry some of my top picks for the sector. Now here is a quick view of how the funds overlap in holdings among one another. And you can see there is quite a bit of overlap since many of the funds have less than 50 total holdings. This doesn't come as a huge surprise to me, but I always look at overlaps before adding a new fund to my portfolio. Now, if you wanna educate yourself a little bit further on some of the top companies in the cybersecurity space, I do have last week's video that can shed just a little bit more light on the subject. But hey, if AI is more to your liking, I also have several videos on that topic too. Thanks so much for watching.